pretty cool to see the bees bringing in the pollen. I do wonder though, is it maybe a bit early for bees to be bringing in pollen? And could that have anything to do with our crazy weather? I snapped this picture the other day um, describing our weather since the 1st of December. Just look at this. Seven days under 32 degrees since the 1st of December. 24 days in the 40s. 19 days in the 50s and five days over 60 degrees. That is far beyond normal for Ohio. I've talked about this before, folks. When we get these warmer winters, it's harder on our bees than if it would stay cold. And that's just because you're up moving around, you're gonna burn calories, you need to replace those calories. So the bees consume more food than they would if they were cold and clustered. Um, so that makes it harder for us beekeepers to predict in the fall how many, how much food stores um, we should have on our colonies going into winter because it's just not like it used to be. It's you can't really even have a set standard um, the way the the weather's changing. You about just have to go with the roll of the dice. Um, you about have to make sure you have the maximum that you can have in there and then be prepared to supplement. Thank goodness for the Hive Alive fondant patties. Those have been working out wonderfully for my bees. And um, in a lot of cases, they actually leave their, their stored food and go for the fondant patty, which is just crazy. Um, but that's what happens. So I thought that was pretty interesting when they showed the breakdown of our weather since the 1st of uh, December. And here it is, the middle of February. So crazy. Now that we've got these warmer temperatures, the chances increase that our bees could starve at any point in time. If we get busy as the beekeeper and don't fall back on checking their um, surplus food, or in my case, the fondant patty, and they would run out for three or four days, um, they would starve and they would die just that quick. They could be booming one minute and then a week later when I go to check them, dead. So it's up to us as the beekeepers to stay ahead of that regimen and um, Keep the bees supplemented with something. Whether you're making your own candy boards, you're using the mountain camp method, which I used for years, and, and it worked great. Um, but now I'm using the Hive Alive fondant patties, and the bees absolutely love them, so I gotta, I gotta feed the girls what they want. So today I wanna discuss these status indicators from Bohemini Bees. Jason over there, um, if you follow his channel, he's got some great content. Um, I've already made a little short clip on how to install these on a box, and I'm gonna share that with you here in a minute. But first, I would like to discuss why you would want a status indicator on your box. So let me open this package back up. Like I said, I've already taken one out and installed it. And it, I should go ahead and say that in each pack, or this pack anyway, had five status disc, and it comes with all the screws to apply it, um, to your box and everything you need. So what we have here is a disc and it turns just like so. And you're gonna see that there's a picture and each one of these windows that turn around into Pac-Man. So, and I can't read them from here, but, so the purple, we got Supercedure. So let's say you're making a, an inspection and you notice Supercedure cells. You could turn this disc on the outside of the box to supersedure. That way when you return in maybe five, seven days and go to make inspections, you know what you need to do and which colony to do it to because the indicator is right here telling you. This one had supersedure cells and you better make sure that they're on the right path. Or you could turn it to mated clean. In that case, everything is just peachy, and maybe that one doesn't so much need your attention, but you know they've got an active laying queen. Now here we've got swarm. So if you see swarm cells, uh, this is a good way to remind yourself, hey, I need to go back and check those swarm cells and make sure they're not about to swarm on me. Um, then we've got no queen, no cells. That one's definitely gonna need attention real soon. Then we've got virgin. 
and then we're back to suit procedure. So if I remove the cover here, here's what each one looks like. So now what I'd like to do is show you how easy it is to install these on a box. To install one of these status discs on a box, it's pretty simple. You're going to get two screws with each disc, and then you're going to take one of these disc assemblies and you're going to disassemble it. And there's going to be three pieces to each one. You've got your back plate, which looks like this. You've got your waterproof or water resistant sticker, which looks like this. And then you've got the Pac-Man looking top cover, which looks like this. Um, we're going to start with the back plate and we're going to pick where on the box we want to install it. And I think I want it here in this left hand corner of my box. So to begin with, I'm going to use a little screwdriver, um, electric screwdriver I have here to install these screws. But we're going to go with the top screw to mount the plate itself. We're going to pick on the box where we want it. And then I'm going to screw this screw into that hole. Now be careful not to over tighten it. That's very important. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our waterproof or water resistant sticker and we're going to peel the back off of it. This is almost an art within itself. Take the sticker, take the back off. Now we're going to line the sticker up inside of the bottom portion of the disc. Like so. Try and push all or any air bubbles out of the sticker. Don't want any place for moisture to, uh, to hang around or for ants to make a nest or whatever it may be. Then we're going to take our top plate. We're going to lay it in here. And then we're going to take the second screw and go right down through it. Like so. Now, remember, don't over tighten this. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to take and just back this off just a little by turning the handle of the drill itself. Yeah, I like that feel a lot better. Now we can see how nice this turns and how really how convenient this is going to be to tell us the status of what's going on in the colony. This colony has a mated queen. We have supersedure cells. We have a virgin queen. We have no queen, no cells, swarm cells. So very, very cool. So you can see they're pretty easy to apply to a box. And I can't remember right offhand what a five pack costs, but it's not much. And it would definitely be handy to be able to analyze right by the front of your box what's going on. I know in the past, I've relied on the brick system, and a lot of you are probably familiar with that. And that's where you take a red brick, and you place it on top of the hive in a certain direction, and then you have to remember in your head, well, if it's pointing east and west, it means this. If it's pointing north and south, it means this. If it's laying down and it's pointing them directions, it means something different than if it's standing up. And you have to remember all that stuff. And then if you have an inspector that's going to show up while you're not in the bee yard to check your colonies, and he doesn't really know your brick system, and he moves them all when he's taking the lids off and doesn't put them back in the same fashion, you might be up creek. I ain't going to say it. I know you want me to, but you're going to be up creek. And uh, that's not good, folks. You don't want to be up the creek. So something to think about there um, I know everybody has their own little way of marking them and different things I use uh, the cattle tags um, started that years ago and now I see a lot of people using the cattle tags to put numbers on their colonies it just makes sense if you number the box and something happens to that box and you have to transfer the bees in that box to a different box how are you gonna take a number you carved in a box and put it on the other box you're not you need a cattle tag and then from there, I started making up my own little system with the cattle tags. Um, one of the things I would do is if the tag number was facing the box, the hive was queenless. If I couldn't read the number, 
Um, and that was a reminder. With these, it might be a little better. I know there were several times I'd go out after a good heavy wind and the cattle tag had blown off. And you're like, which one does this go to? And why didn't I put nails in it? I didn't put nails in it. I used a little hook and cattle tag blew off. And then from there I learned you gotta use screws. It was a big long thing. With this, none of that's needed folks. So something to think about, go over to Jason's uh, website. I'll leave a link down below and you can go over there and check these out and see what other kind of goodies he has to offer. So thanks again, Jason, for um, let me check them out. I'm going to throw some out here on my nukes and see how they do in the weather. So pretty cool. So in other news, I've been swamped on the farm since the beginning of February. It was around the end of January. I noticed that we were just about out of round bales, and that's not good when you got cows to feed. So I knew I needed to reach out to the guy I'm partnered with in this beef operation and tell him, hey, it's not looking good. So I did that and me and him started putting feelers out looking for uh, hay sources. And then about a week and a half later, here I am getting loads of hay. Around the first, maybe about the 7th, 8th, maybe 9th of February, um, I had 160 bales coming. And I was like, whoa, what am I gonna do with all these? So. That's part of the reason I've just missed out on a video um, last week. And then here just a few days ago, we had uh, 15 um, yearling bull calves I had to ban. So those are now banded. In another month, a month and a half, I'll start to wean them from their mama and prepare for this year's calf. But it's just been hectic, one thing after another um, since February started here on the farm. So. I'm kind of hoping things are going to slow back down a little bit and I can get back into my groove, but we'll see. You know, it's, it's life on the farm. You've got to do what is needed. And sometimes that takes the priority over, over a video. So I apologize that I missed last week's video. You can blame it on all these young ladies. I know there's been a few people asking when I'm going to do my cow video and that will be coming up here real soon. You can see I just enrolled some of that bale right there. Let me show you what's so special about that. The beekeeper in it, and you might appreciate it. Can I come in here for a second, girls? I want to show the, the people what we got in here. Right there. That is red clover. Not so much beneficial for bees, but pollinators in general, butterflies, bumblebees, different things of that sort. So by unrolling this bale here, what the cows don't eat gets trampled down into the soil and that includes any seeds that are in the hay. For that reason, we try to buy finer hays and not, not junk hay and we don't have to reseed our pastures. We simply feed the animals with quality hay and what's left over reseeds the pastures for us so you can see the cows are all looking good they're happy this morning mama here got her baby with her everything's looking good except for the weather you remember that warm weather i was telling you we had uh, that's not here this morning um sitting at about 29 degrees and dropping for the day but we're heading back into the 50s for the weekend so what the hay? <laughs> See what I did there? What the hay? I just got a bunch of hay? I don't know. Maybe you don't appreciate my jokes, but I thought it was kind of funny. Anyway, folks, have a great day. You have any questions or comments about today's video, the status disc, or anything I mentioned, please leave them down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to slam that thumbs up button. And if you really like my content and want to see some more of it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your way out. Thanks again, folks, and we'll see you next Sunday. GoPro stop recording. <laughs>